Okay, the second, the next concept that we shall discuss today uh, is the balance sheet. The balance sheet is is keeping a fine a track record of what company own and what it owes. I think the last last week was a time when we were discussing that what company own um, is an asset and what company owes is liability, and what it owes is basically. Uh, where the money comes from and what it own is where the resources go go to. I think I've drawn that uh, tripolar picture a few times. The balance sheet on the one side includes assets and then on the second side it includes liabilities and capital. Liability and capital you can show them as two separate uh, versions but for me capital is a form of liability. I would discuss later once we carry on. Uh, for every company which has a right to exist, uh, any company which has right to exist um, sh must have assets more than liabilities or equal to liabilities. So, for example, if your assets are less than liabilities, it means that uh, the company doesn't exist anymore. It has become bankrupt. It's insolvent. So why the heck, that why is company existing in the first place? So any company which is exist, the assets must be more than liabilities. Okay, uh, you can see that the assets at least can be equal to liabilities, but assets must not fall at any point of time below liabilities because that means the company doesn't have the existential right so you can see here that if assets are below liabilities the company is declared insolvent so for any solvent company the assets should be uh, equal to the least but more the better that should be the equation uh, As you can see here in this data, uh, that this is the liability side and this is the asset side. And you can see here that they, because I'm taking two competitive years for 2017 and 2016, the total of assets, these are the assets in 17 and 16, right? This sum should be, or rather must be, equal to these sums. So you can see that the assets in 2017 are same as or equal to the liabilities uh, So here you can see that the sum of assets is equal to sum of equity and liabilities. Now the question is that why I'm using one assets, but the cost phrase liabilities. Look, as I said before, and I, I'm not denying that honestly, I don't really care whether I call both these terms as one term as liability or I can call them equity and liability. The difference between equity and liability is that liabilities are what companies owe to the outsiders. Supplier, somebody, lender, the government, but the equity is something which company owes to its own shareholders. So basically, equity is the internal liability, whereas liabilities per se are the external liabilities. Remember the example I gave you in the very first day, that if I want to raise a company and you are my investors, half of you are debt holders, half of you are shareholders. I can say that the amount which I owe to the debt holders 
is my external liability because I, you are my investors, but I keep a distance from you. The distance is that you will only get a fixed rate of interest. You will not participate in my profits. You will not bear my losses. But this group of people, they are my shareholders. They are with me in every thick and thin. If company becomes thicker because of pro progress, prosperity, they get more share, more profits. The company becomes thinner because company is losing money, they would be losing as well. Hence, they are in a way part of my entity. So this is equity, equity, and that's the liability. So what happened is that I can call them as equity holders and you guys are debt holders or you, you are basically, I, I owe you this money. But the important point is that legally, you people are my external. So I, I would call them, I would call you as my liabilities in the sense that at some stage, I have to give money back to you. But they are, they are an integral part of the company. And in the process, they can become very rich or very poor, depending upon the, the situation of the company. So what I'm trying to make is that this money, which I get from them is the equity money. And the money which I get from you is a debt money. Debt is a part of liabilities. Okay, so I call the money which I owe to them is my internal liabilities within the company. But the, the money which I owe to you is the external liability. So basically, when, I, when, you, when you read the word liability, uh, you can assume that this is the money or the resources which company owe to the outsiders. And when you look at the word equity or cap just capital, equity or capital or equity capital, if you hear these words, it means this, this is the money which company owes to its internal shareholders. So equity is like an internal liability, which is not a very big problem, but debt or liability is a liability outside. So that, that, that way we have to be careful. And you can see here that the, this company, uh, this is not a small company, it's Finair by the way. Uh, Finair owes, uh, 1,871 million euros to outsiders. So this is a pure liability. But if you look at, um, if you look at the, yeah, this is the liability. If you look at the difference between the two, that would be, that would be the money which company Finair owes to its own. So basically if I'm, if I'm, a, if I'm representing Finair, I owe around 2.8 billion euros to my investors. Nearly 1.8 I owe to the outsiders, the external stakeholders of the company. Whereas uh, approximately uh, 1.0, this is my internal liability, okay? Make sense? And you can see that the company's assets are more than company's liabilities. And if a company's assets are more than company's liabilities, the company is called a, the company is called the solvent company. So you can say that the company, Finair, has a right to exist for sure. If at any point of time, Finair's assets fall below Finair's liabilities, the company would cease to exist. Okay. Now, once again, uh, these companies which you choose, they don't know that there is a very, uh, very strict, infamous teacher uh, who has given you some assignment. All right. So therefore, you might come across these phrases as synonyms. Am I? 
Yeah. So you can see that uh, capital or equity can be called as different names. So you can see that some people call it shareholders capital. Which shareholders capital? I could quickly show you. Um, you can see here the, the equity total. Yeah, this is equity total. Um, this can be called as capital or shareholders capital or shareholders equity or equity capital capital or net assets or owners equity or shareholders net worth. And I may be missing a few more words because I don't know. <laughs> I could write only the words which I remember in the back of my head, but basically they are same. Basically they are same, okay? So if this is the money, all these words, phrases, which I'm writing here, this is that money which the company owes to its shareholders. Does it make sense? So as a, as a nutshell, if I have to make an equation, uh, then I would say that the equation of the balance sheet is equal to total assets equal to total capital uh, total liabilities liabilities plus total equity so if a company's total assets are 1800 all the projects all the investments and the company owe 1000 to the outsiders which means this is a liability. It means that the difference, the gap would be 800. This 800 belongs to the company's investors, uh, not investors, shareholders. So this is this 800 would be all these words. This would be called equity or capital or what I wrote, shareholders capital or net worth or net assets, all right? And this is only possible, this is only possible if companies' assets, this assets, liability, capital. This number would be only positive, this number would be only positive if assets are more than liabilities. This equation will have positive value for the capital uh, only. And we want a company whose capital is positive. If the cap capital becomes negative, it means that your market value is negative or zero. The company doesn't exist anymore in that case. So all the bankrupt companies, just see, just Google the big bankrupt companies in the world. And if you make a list, you will see that one common, one common feature of all the bankrupt companies in the world would be that when they become bankrupt, their assets are less and their liabilities are more. So assets mean what they own is less. Liability means what they owe is more. And that makes them bankrupt. And life is very cruel. Uh, life never remains same. Companies like uh, Andron, companies like uh, Lehman Brothers, companies like uh, Adelphia, these were the companies which, and, and I would say that some companies were on the very verge of becoming bankrupt. I know when I was a student, Vodafone was almost bad. We were counting days, when would be Vodafone declared bankrupt? It was such a bad situation. The assets were slightly uh, an inch uh, higher than its liabilities. 
for example, uh, have you seen what happened a few years ago for Volkswagen when they when this whole thing, the governance issue came that they are using um, not very high quality parts. What they claim is more, but what they do is different. They were almost declared bankrupt. And what would have been ultimate proof of bankruptcy? Assets going down below liabilities. So every company which becomes bankrupt or which potentially can become bankrupt, you can see that, uh, you can point out that the company's liability uh, are more, assets less. So when you do this analysis, you might find that, hey, you know what? Last five years, company X, assets are way above liabilities, but one year, one year, the assets and liability gap is very less. Oh my gosh, there is a reason to be worried. Do you get my point? So when you do this analysis, you will be having this uh, spectacle of investigation that yes, this, this company can be potentially bankrupt. The four, last five years, four years have been very good, but why, the, why this year, the company's assets were so close to liability. Why? What, what made company and potentially bankrupt? All right. So don't even look at the actual bankruptcy, but also see that where is the potential to become bankrupt. When you work for the companies, there's no use of crying after split milk. You have to be proactive. I mean, historically, we can cry. Oh, yes, I wish I would have done that. No, do it not reactively, but proactively. If you're working in a finance department of a company and you find out that in your case company or the company you work for, the gap between assets and liability is, is converging. Hey, you have a reason to be scared of. Inform your superiors, inform your top people that you know what, we, we should be careful. We are heading towards disaster. Okay, at no stage, at no stage, your capital should be negative. And these are the different words why I'm trying to emphasize it that because you are working on different companies. I know that if I say you're 60 and if 30 people uh, are working in a group and 30 individuals, so I would say that there'll be at least 40 companies which the whole group would be uh, analyzing. And for the 40 companies, don't expect the same words, the same phrases. No, it could be different. That's why I'm saying that be, you have to enhance your, uh, you, ha you have to read and understand every word which your case company is using in income statement, in balance sheet, primarily, and even to some extent in your cash flow statement. We are only analyzing three. In general, there are five financial statements but for this course, we shall only study three. Three, two of them, we shall study very deep. And they are income statement and balance sheet. But sometime here and there, we shall also study cash flow statement. But for the others, we, we will not touch those statements for this course. Maybe somebody want to study deeper afterwards. The assets are basically where the resources are going to or the money going to. The assets could be tangible and intangible. So if you look at any company, your case company, you should see now uh, that your assets, the company's assets should be broadly classif classified into tangible and intangible assets. Tangible assets are those which have the physical property, they are touchable, you can see them, they have a physical property, they occupy space. Intangible assets, on the contrary, are, are not seeable. They don't have the physical property, but they have strong growth because they are basically your intellectual capital, your intellectual property. Those are your intangible assets. Now, if I show you the case company, which I have taken in this case, uh, the Finair, I can see here that there are assets, but here the company classify them into intangible assets and tangible assets. The tangible assets 
of course finairs what could be the tangible assets of finair by the way huh? what could be tangible assets of finair computers should building should computer be the first number the plane the aircrafts they have a big fleet of aircrafts if you go by the priority by the order and if i think for this company there is a additional information you can see here they made some graphics that uh, so their assets so they write down here the aircraft including advances paid and current hedging of okay whatever so these are different things so the aircrafts would be the first uh, element of uh, and of course they have the building they have the property they have the ground transportation services or the haulage uh, they might have some uh, some 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 kind of physical property some part of terminal as well and something like that so yeah Yes. Pardon? Goodwill. Goodwill is an intangible asset. Yes, yes, Goodwill. Charity. No. I don't think this is charity. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? Goodwill. Well, I know what it is, but what is in, what is in this paper, I don't yeah. understand. Uh, apparently, if I if I explore the word goodwill, it's very interesting. The word goodwill means that when you start the business, let's say you start a business, okay, from scratch. Not only that, you have built up the assets, but you have also built up the reputation. Now, when you sell this business, you not only claim the money for your physical assets, but also for the brand name, for the popularity, for the reputation. You get the point? So for example, if the sum of all your assets is 20 million, you will not claim 20 million. You will be taking more than 20 million because you say that you see what I, my effort, I'm the one who started this business from scratch. Nobody knew this company. Now people know it. They can recognize it. So this kind of, this is the goodwill. So what you will do, you say, all right, 20 million is the actual price of my business, which I want to receive if I want to sell it, my startup company, yeah. But on top of that, I want to get 5 million for building up all this goodwill over time. This is like a market premium. Yeah. If the total intangible assets, like in this example, I'm looking at it's like 800 million mm -hmm. euros, and they have valued put in 600 million other intangible assets mm -hmm. in my example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting figures. Yeah. So you have to find out that what could be the reason of inflating so much goodwill. Generally speaking, the intangible assets include your trademarks, copyrights. Uh, your software, you know, you have the ownership. Uh, so all these intellectual rights you have, the, the patents. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the companies where a lot of technology is involved, uh, they have more patents or more these kind of things. So I, I would say that uh, Finair, even though it, it seems to be very old fashioned uh, flying um, operator, but they might have strong because they, they might be doing a lot of research and developing their service service process or even they might have their own in-house r d department where they're developing uh, how to save the fuel how to improve the capacity of the engines um how to you know all these things that uh, safety for example the safety of the aircraft uh, in flight and uh, when it's grounded all these things that's part of the intangible assets and even to make the service better for the consumers on board uh, can they let people download the app and they can see what is the food? I mean, if you want to fly from Helsinki to Beijing, so you will be served food at least three times. So what will be the menu? So people can see already, you know, so these kind of things, uh, no matter how big, how small, uh, that could be part of your intangible uh, assets. Okay, but the good news is that whenever you see the financial statements of your case company, you will see something like this. Can you see here? Note, yeah? 
invariably you will have it and what it says note 2.3 yeah note 2.3 means if you scroll down will be a note 2.3 they are called explanatory notes because it's a data you can't stuff a lot of information in these figures so if you want to know who are your intangible assets uh, more details and if you're interested in go and see note 2.3 and if you want to see who are your intangible uh, sorry tangible assets read note 2.1 mm -hmm. uh, 2. Oh, sorry uh, read note 2. Point, uh, 4. 4, yeah no 2.1 yeah. and then you have the assets uh, investment in associate and joint ventures do you know that we discussed last time that you might you may have collaboration with many companies abroad or in the country okay so if you are investing in some uh, let's say there's a small vietnami company and it says that you know what you can we can earn a lot of business for you in vietnam uh, from vietnam to to cambodia to to thailand uh, anybody who is actually or maybe a small thai company says that uh, all the Finns who travel to bangkok uh, or Pattaya, uh, we can, you don't have to make a new flight carrier here. We can provide you the service, cheaper travel, safe, everything, high standard to, to Hanoi. So they go, they, they, they fly morning to Hanoi, spend hours and then come back, very cheap flight. Uh, but you know what? We don't have much money. We don't have technological expertise. Then, Finnair can invest in those companies to like 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 a like an angel investor okay so that would be called uh, investment in its associates and joint ventures i think i discussed that uh, the collaborations could be of three categories generally if you invest 75 percent and above in the other company that company is called your subsidiary if it is around 50%, it's a joint venture. But if you invest below 50%, around 25%, it's, then you that company will be called your affiliate or associate. Sometimes you don't invest monetarily. You only invest through your expertise. You know, this small company based in Bangkok can say, could you send your engineer? We have, a, we have two aircrafts. Uh, they're in good conditions, but you know what? I, I we want to make them compatible, safety compatible to Finnair. Could you please send your engineers to to check it out? So here could be some kind of collaboration. So basically, these are all uh, the assets. Okay. Now here you see the word comes non-current assets. So if if you add this, 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 and this that becomes non-current assets. It means these are Finnair's assets which whose life is more than a year, 365 days and above. I think that's what we discussed last week. The difference between current and non-current is that in finance, Everything is current, which is max up to 364 days. 365 and above becomes long-term or non-current. Yeah, makes sense. One item I forgot, loans and other receivables. Loans are, uh, it could be possible that Finnair has given a loan to another company, you know? Is it, a, is it Finnair's uh, asset? Because Finnair owe this money, uh, own this money. The Finnair gives loan to somebody. Let's say Finnair gives loan to KLM, which is not possible, but let's assume. Finnair gives loan to KLM. KLM owe this money to Finnair, yeah? This money would appear in KLM's liability because KLM owes to Finnair, but this money would appear as asset in Finnair's account because Finnair owned this money. Okay, 
So when you include assets, you have the physical assets like this. So physical assets, just, just have a look where I'm uh, highlighting non-physical assets and financial assets. So here you can see three categories of assets, physical, non-physical, and financial assets. Receivables, uh, one word which is very interesting. A receivable is that Finnair has given a service to somebody, some company, but that company has not yet paid back to Finnair. Do you get my point? Let's say there is a, uh, there's a group of Japanese tourists, they say that, you know what, this Japanese company, they say that to Finnair, we want that, uh, we, we, we want to char charter a flight every week from Tokyo, Helsinki, back to Tokyo. But you know what, we are building up our company, but we will pay you after one year. Why I'm using the one year? Because here I'm talking about the non-current assets, which, which will mature after one year, yeah? So we will be paying you after 13 months. So Finnair is providing the service to these Japanese tourists, but Finnair would get this money after a year. Then this is called receivable, yeah? Receivable. So this money will come back to uh, Finnair's bank account after a year. Uh, okay, make sense? Uh-huh. Name, balance sheet, balance sheet, sample statement of financial position. Yeah, it could be something. Does it show assets and liabilities? Yeah, yes, assets. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they use the word financial. But the balance sheet is more generic word. Yeah, I, I can see that this later. Later. On. Oh yeah, you can uh, see what. Yeah, yeah. Generally, property plant and yeah. Generally, uh, Finnair is a very typical example. But if a normal company, your most tangible assets are PPE, PPE, property plant equipment. Okay, so property plant. Equipment. Even for Finnair, why can't we say the word PPE, property, plant, equipment? Property, the aircrafts, uh, plants where they have these uh, workshops and all this thing. Equipment, they have tons of equipment they use in, in, in the aircraft crafts. Uh, yeah. So PPE is another phrase for fixed assets or tangible assets. Uh, yeah. Which means property, plant, and equipment. And all together, they become the non-current assets, yeah? Uh, so tangible, intangible. I gave some more examples of intangible assets. Goodwill, uh, patents, trademarks, copyrights, uh, what is the word? Brand equity, designs. If, you are a, if, you, if your company is making some designer clothes, then your brand equity, your designs are your intellectual property, which is an intangible assets. Uh, for, for example, for tech companies, uh, they have lots of softwares, uh, which is uh, their intangible assets. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. And then comes the current assets. But I would show you from the example, and then we come back to the current assets. The current assets as you can see that uh, they mature within the year they mature within the year okay they mature within the year and who are they well they are inventories what is inventory mm -hmm. the stocks in your warehouse which you use to run your company so if you are a furniture making company your inventory would be three things uh, your inventory basically inventory has three components i can write here it 
inventory includes three things the first is raw material the second is semi or semi finished or processed goods okay you make furniture but the chair is not ready yet the day you close your books uh, we have some chairs which are almost ready but they're not maybe the maybe they don't have four legs they have two legs a good example so you you can't sell two leg chair can you no, don't don't do that please yeah so they are they are semi processed uh, goods or lastly they are finished goods they are finished goods they are complete but they are not yet ready for sale what what does it mean a finished good is not ready for sales yet see here that for finer uh, you have the uh, inventories yeah and if you want to see who, who those inventories are i'm sorry i don't remember them you have to go to point 1.2 point no there is no note for it they, they don't explain much who are their inventories but you can guess what inventories can be for thin air okay or if you type if you have your case company you can type in the word inventory and maybe you can see you know what your your annual report is always in pdf never shy away from typing some words if you want of course you can see the notes here for more details but if you really want to see sometimes the notes are not really um, updated or maybe you want to see more information then don't shy away from using the search word and see where the the word inventory appears how many times and that see um okay is there any anything you want to ask me before we proceed uh so you can see here uh in this case we have inventory then we have trade and other receivable this is the money which the uh, customer of finair the customers of finair have used the services of finair but have not paid yet but one thing is for sure that they will they will be paying in it within the year because that is why it is in the current assets <laughs> if it is more than a year then it it would be here okay uh, of course when you book the flight to finair as a individual customer you never have the luxury of paying later right but if you are a corporate client let's say you are a group of chamber of commerce or group of a companies in thailand uh, they they make an agreement with finair that they would send their executives to have holidays in in helsinki every summer so they are the corporate clients like it's like a b2b business uh, they might pay you later and the order is so big that finair would never insist them to pay right now okay so in that case but one thing is for sure that because this item is here on the current assets it means they would definitely pay uh, on or before 364 days this i will not talk yet at all because when you do your second assignment when you do your second assignment it's all based on this mm -hmm. do you remember the nature of this course the nature of this course is that in the first assignment you identify what financial problems the company has and then the second assignment is how you treat the problem how you give the medicine which financial medicine you give to the company to cure it this is the financial medicine okay to to get your company protected and i will discuss then but of course it's a asset and then you have the other financial assets like something their financial assets maybe you buy, buy some um, short bills of a company or you 
and and you can also buy shares of another company for example if finnair is buying shares of kone it's a financial investment and then what happened cash and cash equivalents basically cash and cash equivalent is the bank account of finnair <laughs> there could be many things in it but primarily cash and cash equivalents uh, are the bank account of finnair the word is why do we have this word equivalent then cash and cash equivalent cash equivalent means almost cash almost cash what do you mean by almost cash there is a cash there is no cash what is almost cash the almost cash is that if you have your current account with the bank you can use that money any time you wish to but if you have a time deposit with the bank time deposit means the bank want to keep this money with it for certain time period but if you want to insist the bank you know what sorry sorry uh, ceo or cfo of uh, finnair is calling the top manager of nordea and saying uh, sorry uh, manager i am so and so calling from finnair we have bank account with you um, you know what we have uh, how much money we have 16 we have 17 million euros in your bank and you are uh, you provide us very good services i'm very happy uh, out of this seven million is is the current account which means we can withdraw this money anytime we wish to but 10 million we have to keep for at least six months with you all the time but the problem is that we are going to buy a new fleet new new aircraft something and that is costing us 9 million we can use 7 million from our current account right now but can i know it i know it's a inconvenient to you can we take 2 million from our fixed account of course you will get it the money belongs to you but taking this extra 2 million from this account will take some time you get my point some paperwork that is why the word comes equivalent cash and almost cash it may take some time to make this account or this cash as almost cash you get my point so this this is a small example i know it will never happen like this but i'm just trying to make it possible that how you can have cash and cash uh, equivalents cash cash has a quality of being liquid nobody denies it but when you say cash equivalent you might have to first convert something to cash before you use the cash